Welcome to the Temple Heights Baptist Church, our midweek service. And we're going to begin with a word of prayer to ask God's blessings upon everything that we do. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet with other Christians. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you. We thank you that we're here to share one with another blessings, to hear from your word, to let your Holy Spirit minister to us. We ask it in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. We're going to begin by worshiping the Lord. Number 375, no. all three verses. Isn't that so? 357. 357. 67, okay. 57. 57. Isn't that what I said? No, he said 375. 357. Okay, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> 357. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loved me, Jesus loved me, Jesus loved me. I am so glad that Jesus loved me, Jesus loves even me. Though I forget him and wander away, still he does love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms I will flee when I remember that Jesus loved me.
things I learned in Spanish as a new believer in Christ. Bellas palabras de vida. And uh, as I've always loved that tune. Let me get my glass of water here and I'll be right with you. invite you to open your Bibles with me, please, to Psalms 118. Psalms 118. I'm going to read verses 1 through 8. Psalms 118, 1 through 8. Psalm of David. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I fear I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again we come to you asking your blessings afresh. We don't want to attempt to proclaim even your word without your divine blessing. So Lord, I pray that you would Take my thoughts, order them, order the words that I say and utter. May they bring honor and glory unto the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that souls might be drawn to thee. We pray that people that have not been born again, may they experience being born again of the Spirit. Amen. Father, we ask all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Several years ago, I, I was looking in some little Bible trivia. I don't know about you folks, but I like to learn things about the Bible. Amen. Little things that normally you don't hear. And um, Psalms 118. Psalms 118. I don't know if you know this or not. But Psalms 118, this is the chapter that is exactly in the center of the Bible. Some people don't know that. The chapter that is exactly in the center of the Bible is Psalms 118. And they found out that there are 594 chapters before this psalm, and there's 594 chapters after the psalm. And so the total of chapters is 1,188 chapters. It's in the exact center of the whole Bible. And then if we look at the chapter just before Psalms 118, I want you to look at that. Psalms 117. That is the shortest chapter in all of the Bible. Psalms 117 is the shortest chapter in all of the Bible. It has only two verses. And then if you look at Psalms 119, that's the longest chapter in all of the Bible. And so the chapter that's right in the middle is between the shortest and the longest chapter of the Bible. 
the longest chapter of the Bible, that would be a challenge for anyone to learn and memorize. It's 176 verses long. I'll tell you what, that's, that's, a, good, uh, that's a good challenge, right? To learn Psalms 119. Now, the verse, if we were to look at chapter 118, the verse that is exactly in the center of the whole Bible is Psalms 118 and verse 8. Now, I'm going to read that again. This is the exact center of the whole Bible in reference to chapters and verses. It says here, it is better to trust in the Lord. Now, if you go to the original Hebrew, the word is Jehovah. And in Spanish, that's what it says. Es mejor confiar en Jehová. Jehovah. And so, when they translated it into the King James, they substituted the word Jehovah for Lord. It says, it is better to trust in the Lord, or Jehovah, than to put confidence in man. And as I studied and looked up of this little trivia here, this verse, this verse tells us where we can find the perfect will of God for our lives. Where can we find the perfect will of God for our lives? <clears throat> Putting our total trust and confidence in Him. It's not in man. It's not in yourself. It's not in the knowledge that you can accumulate. Our total confidence is in God and His eternal love. Amen? His love is unchanging in the midst of this mixed up world that we're living in. And talk about mixed up. I tell you what, it's getting more mixed up all the time, amen? Getting more mixed up all the time. This verse and thought gives us confidence. Not only confidence, it instills in us total security. We find total security when we put our total trust and all of our faith in Him for your situation. You have situations in life. I have situations in life. Where do we turn to? We need to turn to Him. And this is the exact center of the Bible. It is better to trust in the Lord Jehovah than to put confidence in man. I'd like to read verse 9 also. Boy, this verse 9 is, is good for the time in which we're living. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Or, you could say kings, or government officials, or presidents. Hey, I don't know about you, but the more I uh, think about politicians and politics today, it's, uh, it's terrible. Amen? You look at politics and you lose confidence in men. It seems like everybody that gets in politics, they're there for a while, and when they leave, they're millionaires. All of them are millionaires. You can go to any, any, any place, and uh, they come out uh, with a, a lot of moolah, right? A lot of moolah. And uh, we find that where we find our total trust, where do we find our total security? In putting our trust in Him, in all of our situations. I'd like to read several verses in this chapter now, and it starts off with verse 1. Let's look at verse 1 again. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, because His mercy endureth forever. Isn't God good to us? Amen? In the midst of all of the pandemic, in the midst of all of the chaos, in the midst of all of this, God is good. Amen? And so it tells us very clearly here, give thanks unto Him, for His mercy 
endureth forever. Jump to verse 4. It says, Let them now that fear the Lord, and I looked at fear the Lord, it doesn't mean to tremble before the Lord. The, it gives reference, if we look into those uh, uh, scriptures and study guides, it gives reference to reverence the Lord, or to honor the Lord, or to worship the Lord. That's the fear of the Lord. Amen. And in that case, each and every one of us need to live in the fear of the Lord. Reverence him. Honor him. Worship him. Every day of our lives. Not just when we come to church, but every day of our life. Amen. And it says, notice verse 5 and 6. Verse 5 and 6. I called upon the Lord in distress. Doesn't that sound like prayer? That sounds like prayer, amen? Mm -hmm. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. Now, when we call upon the Lord, Jehovah, and pray to him, what does the Bible tell us here? What a promise. He will answer us. Amen? I believe that God answers prayer. Amen? He answers prayer. What a promise. God will answer our prayers. And then we come to verse 8. And I'm going to read it again. Remember, this is the exact center of the whole Bible. And it points to how we know God's perfect will. By putting our total trust and confidence in Him. Notice, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And in verse, verse 9, I'd like to read verse 9. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes, says. Uh, tell you what, pre presidents may come and go, but the Lord is Lord forever. Amen? He's going to be Lord forever. Now look at verse, uh, look at look at the next verses I'd like to bring to your attention. Verse 14 and 15 in that chapter. The Lord is my strength in song and has become my salvation. This is for those that put their trust in him. He's our strength in times of trouble, in times of distress. Notice in verse 15, the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. Tell you what, when, when it refers to the righteous, it's talking about the saved. That's you and I. We're righteous not in ourselves, but we're righteous in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the righteous one. Amen? And God sees us and justifies us declares us just through the Lord Jesus Christ. Look what it says in verse 17. I've, uh, when I was reading this years ago, and I came across this verse, and I said, I'm going to claim one of that verses for my favorite verses. It says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I went through that about a month and a half ago. I was this close to death again. But you know what? I'm still here. I'm still here. And I declare this verse as one of my life verses. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And look at verse 19. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them. And I will praise the Lord. You know what? Praising the Lord is not just coming and singing songs that we've chosen ahead of time. Praising the Lord is thanking Him from the bottom of your heart every day for everything. And knowing it's because of Him that you opened your eyes today. Because of Him. Amen? He gave us another day to live. Rejoice in it. And notice what it says in verse 24. And we sing this 
verse all the time. Some of you didn't know where it was found. Psalms 118, verse 24. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That's found in Psalms 118 and verse 24. I was told, and uh, I think Brother Jess Pincus, uh, when uh, he, he told me this once, and uh, on various occasions he asked me to preach in uh, the Friends of Israel. I did that in times past. And uh, he brought this to my attention. He said, Clark, did you know that when uh, they took the Seder in the old times past, and it says even when Jesus finished the Lord's Supper, when they left the room, they sang. You know what they sang? They believe it was this psalm and this verse. This is the verse that probably Jesus sang. And this is the verse that they sing after Seder's. And it says, This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? We will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, sometimes we get up and that week uh, it doesn't look too promising. Maybe you're going to have to jump a lot of hurdles, spiritually speaking, that week. Doctor's appointments. Maybe you're not feeling up to par. And uh, maybe you have problems in your family. Maybe you have personal problems. But I want to, you to look at this. God has you here. And God gave us this day. This is the day the Lord hath made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 118 and verse 24. But look at verse 28 and 29. The last two verses of this chapter. <coughs> Thou art my God, David said, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. What is he doing? He's showing forth the fear of the Lord. What did we say the fear of the Lord was? Reverencing God. Honoring God. Worshiping God. That's the fear of the Lord. In everything that we do. Amen. He says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. I am standing here in front of you because his mercy endureth forever. Amen? Temple Heights still exist as a church and it's gone through a lot because his mercy endureth forever. Amen? I'd like to for us to sing maybe twice through. And uh, this is the day the Lord hath made. Maybe you can accompany me with that. This is the day. We're going to sing it twice through. Amen? Can I say something about this? Yes, yes. Teresa. That day that my mother was very sick and I said, can I go there? God told me to go over there and talk to her. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, that's all right. Just pray for her and she was saved that day. She was saved by your... That Singing that song and reading that verse. Amen. We sing this in Spanish also. Let's sing it twice, amen?
like that verse. I can't get away from it. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's a life verse for me also. Amen? All right, we're going to have a time of prayer. And so... Uh,